trying something different today. You ever heard me talk fast? Yep. Yep. Church people? I got this little ball for Miss Donna to calm me down. So I'm just going to squeeze it as I'm talking. If I get a little wound up, I'm going to use all the energy on the ball today. So don't laugh at me. Because what I want to minister today, I think, is very profound. Going to stretch, stretch some of us and, and grow. And a lot of us are going to grow. And, and maybe some will consider something they never considered before. But uh, we've been in Ephesians. And I'm going to go back to Ephesians chapter, chapter 5. And I'm going to read some and then bounce around. Is that okay? And uh, I'm going to start in ch- the end of chapter 4. And go into in chapter 5 and read probably, probably 10 verses or so. So, you ready? Starts off in, in verse 31 and it says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and glamour and evil speaking be at the top of your list. Is that what it says? It says, it says put away, be, let these things be put away from you. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, glamour, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another, be kind to one another, tender hearted, even as God in Christ forgave you. Isn't that beautiful? Then in, then in chapter one, he starts this. He says, therefore, be imitators or followers of God as dear children. And one of the things I always remind you when the word dear, one of the words is favorite. So I'll stop for a minute and just stop there and just take a deep breath. Do you know that you're God's favorite? Do you believe that you're God's, when you look at somebody, you think you're God's favorite, but the person next to you, you're God's favorite. And I think that's a profound affirmation. The world wants to tell you you're no good. And, 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 and you ever heard of denial? Yep. Not the river. Some people do that. The denial, and sometimes in life, especially, I said this the other day, in recovery classes, different things, a lot of people live in denial. Or denial, denial. But one of the things I've learned in this new life in Christ is I have to deny some of the old mindsets, or maybe that water wants to bring back up. I needed to, I needed to start with some denial, going, I'm not that old creation, I'm a new creation. I'm not, I'm not somebody God doesn't like. I'm his favorite. I am not uh, whatever you want to put in there. How many people have, bad, have had thoughts about, how many people growing up said you'll never amount to nothing? Or you're nobody, or, or, or this, that, or the other. But when you, be, I think as a believer, you can take some statements or take some deals and say, you know what, I'm going to deny those thoughts and I'm going to line up my thoughts with what God says about me. I'm not an old caterpillar, I'm a butterfly that was made to, that was made to soar and to fly. Yes. I'm not just somebody that's whatever you want to put in there. And I've learned over life when that comes to come, tries to creep in. You ever had depression? That darkness and all the, you know, I'm not going to let depression have its say. I'm going to get some education, get some understanding. I'm going to fill my word with affirmations so when depression shows up, it doesn't have any voice or any power in my life. I'm not going to always be, woe is me. Uh, I'm not going to become the, you know, a lot of people become victims and live in, but they live in the problem they created. Did I say that loud? A lot of people live and they become victims to a problem they create. And I'm not going, ooh, look at that. But sometimes people like to live in victimhoodness. They like to have a sad story or this story and and feel like they're entitled to everything. Where God said, that's not who you are. Jesus said, Paul says, that's not who you are. You are a new creation. You've been, been made brand new. The old things have been washed away. Behold, all things are new. How many like new? When, and, and one of my words for new is when we, when we begin to break that word down new, acro- uh, what's an acrostic? When you do that, you begin to navigate life differently. Right. You begin to be empowered to see life differently. And then you begin, then you begin to have a will and an appetite to, to live out this life that God has given you in Jesus Christ. Amen. And one of those things in Titus, it's, I love in Titus, I can preach all the time, it says affirm constantly. What does constantly mean? All the time. Affirm. What is affirm? Continue to say what God says about you. Not just as positive thinking, but let it be a reality of a transformed heart. Let it be a reality of a transformed heart. And as you begin to do that, you begin to change and begin to grow, not from the outside in, but from the inside out. 
And, you're, and, and when the storms of life come, you're not on the front of the boat freaking out and then, go, then looking up or going to the bottom of the boat in that story and going, God, D or Jesus, don't you care? Where Jesus is sleeping in the, in the pillow. Sometimes when God, his word is his word, and sometimes we just need to believe it is thus and so. And Jesus said at the beginning, we're going to the other side. Sometimes we just need to camp out and say, he says I'm a new creation. All the other things that tries to come against me, I'm not going to live in that place. I'm going to deny the rights they have to rob me of my thoughts and my mind and my direction in life. I'm going to trust him, rely on him, and continue to grow in who he says I am. How many got a past? How many know that God says, I'm not holding that against you anymore? Your brand new creation. He is, he's totally committed to the new you, and he's totally uncommitted to the old you. What I'm saying is he's totally uncommitted to trying to rehab the old you. He says, you know what my focus is? I'm going to focus on the new you. I want you to see that there's a new you, and I'm committed to you learning and growing and walking this out. Isn't that pretty? And I, it, it, wow. And a lot of times we want to talk about all the old us. You ever done that? I remember your story. I'm not going to tell it. But she shared some stories. <laughs> I'm like, not rudely. <laughs> but she's better now. But here's, here's part of the journey. Her story isn't that. Her story is she's a new creation. Her story is she's been delivered from the power of darkness, translated over into the kingdom of his love and light. Amen. And that's where she lives from. Yeah. Does that bring some joy and some peace? Not a bunch of hype, but a reality that she can take a deep breath and say, I'm God's favorite. Right. And I'm going to follow his way of doing life. I'm going to follow the blueprint that he's given me to live life. He's given me, an ex and, and if you read back in Ephesians, we'll do, he's given me acceptance. He's given me, I've been chosen. I've been, I've been delivered. I've been, you ever read that in Ephesians chapter one? You're holy and blameless. You're above reproach. Uh, it says that you're accepted. It says that you're in the beloved. Oh, verse seven. Oh, and by the way, you've been forgiven of all sins. Amen. Why didn't he start with that one? He builds you up right in the middle. Oh, I, oh, by the way, you're forgiven. You are forgiven. It's so powerful in our journey of life, realizing, realizing that this is the new identity that he's given us to live this life. And learning, learning to be a receiver that he says, I'm his favorite. Can that not transform your life? You're not trying to earn a place at the table. You've been given a place at the table. You're not trying to prove to anybody he's already made everything available. Amen. And it says it's incorruptible. It's not going to fade or go away. And I know, I know I, you might hear me say it a lot, but learning, learning to accept and to receive and to say, do your power pose in the morning in the mirror. I'm God's favorite. I'm God's favorite. He loves me. He cares for me. Everything I put my hand to says he'll turn to good. He's, he's for me, not against me. He says, I can do all things through Christ. He says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. He says, how do we overcome evil? By doing good. How do we overcome evil? By doing good. And as you begin to do, it begins to change your thoughts, your pattern, how you see things, how you do things, how you operate, how you, how you operate with your spouse, how you operate with work, how you operate with work, uh, uh, marriage, work. Vehicles, whatever, whatever you put your hand to, you operate different. Instead of being ungrateful, all of a sudden you could be thankful for the things that are around you and giving you. Amen? Are you God's favorite? No strings attached. And he says, as God's favorite, walk in love. Well, that's a tough one, isn't it? But is it your love you produce or it's his love that's given you? It says he's all, is it his love? He is a agape love. It's like a bottle. He's not trying to be a bottle of water. He is water. He is love. He wants, he says, I am love. You are walk in love. Who's, where's the love and the, where's the strength to walk in love come from? You or from him? Is there something about walking in love that changes how we do life? Is it more for them as it is for you or could it be for both? Learning and growing to walk in love and to give that love which you receive. Give the same grace that was given to you. Isn't that something? We all like to give, receive grace, but what about giving grace? What about receiving? We all like to be loved. What about giving love? You know, 
Don't always be self-absorbed about it. Learn to give it away. Because it wasn't yours. It was a gift from heaven. It was a gift from heaven. Man, I'm trying to get to verse 18. You think we'll make it there? <laughs> and walk in love as Christ has also loved us and given himself for us. Then it goes on here, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. How many like something that smells sweet? Can I say y'all smell good? When God looks at you, he just didn't say, you're my favorite. He looks at you, he doesn't do this. He says, man, you smell, you, there's a sweet smell. You smell like heaven. You smell like the honey from heaven. You smell, you, what's another one? You, what's, I, I think honey is about the sweetest you can be. But you smell like, you smell like honey. You smell like heaven. Isn't that something? Yes. He doesn't look at you and go, oh my gosh, I love them, but boy, they sure stink. I love them, but they need some, they need to work on their pH balance. I love them. No. However, he says, he looks at you, he sees you, and he says, man, not only are they my favorite and they look good, but they smell good. What does smell good? That usually means fresh, clean. I mean, I like smelling fresh and clean. It's, it's a big difference between dirty and nasty. You ever been dirty and nasty? <laughs> Don't raise your hand. <laughs> all right. Now watch this. This where he, Then all of a sudden, watch what he says here, Mr. Rich. He says, but, he says, but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for the saints. And we just, those things he says there, he goes, that doesn't fit the new you. He said, don't even talk about or mention because that's not the new you. That doesn't fit you. He says, neither, then, he's, then he talks this, he goes, neither filthiness, nor, nor foolish talking, nor coarse gesturing, which are not fitting, but rather giving thanks. For this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covet covetous man who is an idolater has any, listen to this, has any inheritance in the kingdom of God. Boy, that sounds encouraging, does it? Don't shout me down here. Has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God? Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers of them. Now, if we just, now listen, let me read the next verse. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Did you hear that? He says, you're not them. He says, you once were in darkness, but that's not who you are anymore. He says, don't walk like them. Walk as children of what? Walk as children of light. He didn't say become light. He said, walk as children of light. Are you following me? We'll come back to that in a minute. I'm going to circle back around to that. But I think I need to read the whole thing. For you were once in darkness, but now you are light. You are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all. Goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord and have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather... But rather, oh, here's that word, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep and arise from the dead. And Christ will give you, and Christ will give you light. See then that you, well, I'm not going to go that far. I'm just going to stop right there for a minute. Boy, that's a, that's a deep one, isn't it? It can be. It can be. But I, don't, but I want to stop for a minute, and I'm going to circle back around this, because a lot of times the word expose, we use this word expose a lot of times, or we use things in this verse here, and we use it to beat people up, or we use it to fight darkness. We think we're doing the right thing by fighting the darkness. And it says you have no inheritance in the kingdom of God. That's a deep one, is it? Now, in my early years of growing up in, in, in Bible doctrine, Bible teacher, I used to believe that I used to believe that that meant I lost my salvation. Man, I was out. I was back at the altar on Sunday trying to get resaved. 
But then I've learned over the years, when I, even in here, it says you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit to the day of redemption. When you believe the truth of salvation, you were sealed. What does sealed mean? It's a done deal. It's a done deal. And now some of you, you might have to learn to wrestle that. I wrestled it out for a long time. And I used to spend all my time figuring my job as a Christian was to expose the darkness and to fight it. And one thing I learned over the time that I got exhausted. I got wore out because all I would do is get into, I would, we would go, to, I mean, I would spend time just, we'd get together in these big meetings and big things and we would just, we would just fight it. And then what I learned, I'm just in the darkness I spent my time fighting the darkness. Guess what's all around me? I just spend my time in the darkness. You ever heard of shadow boxing? Yeah. I'm just shadow. You know, I believe when you live in darkness, you have no purpose, no meaning, and there's no direction in life. And as you do that, and one thing I've learned, one thing that I've learned as I've grown and, and, and changed some of the way I think on things is one of the profound things when Paul's writing about inheritance, if you go and read Galatians chapter 6, Chapter 1, verse 6, I'll probably read that. And you ever heard of, of Galatians chapter 5? It says, the, it says the works of the flesh, and it goes down like there's 17 different things, 19 through 21, and then, and then 20, 22 and 23 says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, goodness, kindness, gentleness, and, and against such there is no law. But it also says in that same one, the people that practice these things will not inherit the kingdom of Jesus. And then you go to Rome, and if you go to Corinthians, it says the same things. It gives a big list, and we can pick up the big ones. And we pick up the big ones. You know what the big ones are? Don't mention it. Well, I might read them in a minute. But we miss out on words about your speech, malice, anger, bitterness. We, 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 we skip over I got no problem with those, brother. But all the other ones we want to do. And one of the things that really, that really has helped my journey is realizing it's not my job to expose all that as it is for me just the, the quickest way to dispel darkness is flip on a light switch. It's not about me trying to, 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 to name all this stuff and bring it out to the quickest way to dispel darkness is a flip on a light switch. And as you flip on a light switch, how do you flip? When you flip on a light switch, it illuminates this whole room and you, and you see things all around you that you might not have seen before. If you're walking in darkness, you aren't going to see anything. What's my purpose? What's my meaning? And I liken it to this. When you walk in darkness, it's like feeding off of the tree of good and evil. All you're doing is continually feeding off of this tree of good and evil. And we were never called to feed off the tree of good and evil. We were called as believers to feed from the tree of life. And as we feed from the tree of life, does that not change how we do things? And just picture that, and, and one of the things, how many here like light? Walk as children of the light. Now that sounds a little, woo, spacey. Beam me up, Scotty. But from the very beginning, of the, from the very beginning don't we have, God said light be and light was. Light's been around for a long time. Light has a lot of, the sun comes up. Can, and, it, and it shines and illuminates everything around. You see the beauty, the rivers, the trees, the this, and that, and the darkness. You ever been in the dark trying to walk around? How does that work for you? Hmm? Can I read another verse to you? Let's go to Acts 26. I'm going to pick this. Maybe I'll read all of them. Why am I doing all this? Acts 26, I'm going to come back to my inheritance, I'm going to come back to this for a minute. Watch this. Here, here, this is Paul again. Paul's writing, or talking, or writing this story next. He's before king, before the king. Grippa, tell him his story, how he got here, what's going on. Watch what he says to the king here. Uh, verse 17, he's talking about what, what happened to him on his, on his journey. And he talks about what God was doing and tells him. He says, I will, God says, I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles of whom I now send you. Watch this in verse, in verse 18. To open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light. Did you hear that? What was, part of, what was Paul's mission? Was his purpose to fight the darkness? 
His purpose was to turn, turn people from darkness to light. His purpose was to, to get you to quit feeding off the tree of good and evil and start feeding from the tree of life. Start feeding from that tree of life. And then he goes on here and he says, watch this. From the power of darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. Ooh. And then here, here's what the light does. That they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. I mean, like that inheritance again. There's that inheritance. What's the light? What the light does is it, 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 it gives you forgiveness from all sins and it, and it imparts to you an inheritance that comes from heaven. It's an inheritance that comes from heaven among those who are sanctified. What's sanctified? Those who've been given a new heart. They're clean. They're new creations. When you're in Christ Jesus, do you believe you have a new heart? You have a clean heart. You no longer have to be that old, that old, that old verse that says, Lord, create in We used to sing this. I used to still sing it. I'm not going to beat up about it. But we sing that song, Create in Me a Clean Heart. One of my favorite songs. Create in me a clean heart. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, God. But you know what happens on the other side of the cross? You've been given a new heart. You have a clean heart. I'm not trying to get to a clean heart. I've been given a clean heart. Isn't that life changing? Isn't that life changing? Whew. By your faith in me. By having undiluted confidence in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Did he die for you? Did he pay for his sins? Romans says, while you were enemies... Sinners and evil, Christ died for you because of his great love. Did he say when you get it all perfect, everything's going to work out for you? So, so, so this inheritance part, if you go back to the Roman time of when Paul was writing, all through there about inheritance. Inheritance in the Greek and Roman society was a major thing. Maybe in our culture it's not as, as a major, it might have been something. In it. But in their society, their social status on all domains was dependent on inheritance. And out of, there's like 50 books of that Roman time or that law. And out of those 50 books of the law, 11 of them were about inheritance rights. And all different things, like, like you could have, we heard of a will and a trust. We probably have some of those. But back then, but back then, let's say the man, all the men died or were out and the women received the inheritance. Well, they received it, but then the next to kin who was a male was the one who was given the power and authority to operate that. That's a crazy one. But you read all the different customs, all the different things of how that was done. So in their, their society, inheritance, inheritance had a major social standing to how they did life. And Paul is using this word to the context of those people to share with them that your social status no longer is in darkness, but your social status is as children of light. And thus as children of light live fitting as children of light. No longer feeding from the tree of, of, of good and evil, but feed from the tree of life. And as you see that in parting there, he says the people that want to live in all these other domains are missing out on the inheritance that is theirs. They're missing out because they're feeding from the wrong tree. And all through the Bible, you see the theme of light. All the way through, you look, you look all through, people were in great, uh, what's, there's great dark, the, the, the darker the dark, the brighter the light, uh, the, the Gentiles, there's a light coming to the Gentiles, there's, you look all through Isaiah, you look, look at John chapter 1, he's the life and the light of all who believe in him. My definition of light is a divine illumination given to you and me by Jesus Christ. He shares his light with our light. It's not me trying to go get some light. It's he gives that divine illumination through his death, burial, and resurrection, the new creation being, being made holy and righteous in him. And the more that I do, now think about this. The, the, the Ephesian people, they didn't grow up with any church background. They had a bunch of rituals. You'd go to see Aphrodite. Guess what you did at that temple? You'd go to see this one over here. Guess what you did at that temple? There was one where you had babies, your newborn baby was thrown into the river to, to bless the water god to fertilize their fields for the year. Now we look at that, but that was their custom. That was the way they did things. That was the part of the way that social standing was. And when Paul comes along and says, listen, 
That's not your social standing anymore. Your social standing isn't from the power of darkness, but from the power of light. Your social standing, watch this, your social standing is sons and daughters of the Most High. Your social standing is you were once dead in your sins, but now you've made, made alive in Christ. Your social standing is all the things that pertain to life and godliness have been given you in Christ Jesus. And a lot of times we read all of these verses to beat people up, but really what it is, is they're allowing the power of darkness to manipulate them and they're feeding from the wrong tree. So you and I, a lot of times, want to run, our methods are, our motives are always pure, but our methods a lot of times can be a mess. Because we think we got to run it. I've learned this over the years that the, the walking in the light and loving people will do more in somebody's heart than you ever trying to, to tell them that they're messed up. Amen. To tell them that they're messed up or even some of their things they're doing because they'll never consider anything if you just, I'm going to give you this nice plate of steak and tell you that God loves you and cares for you. And just before I do it, I throw it in his face. You think he's going to receive anything I just said to him? You've done that before, haven't you? You don't do it. Are you getting anything on this? All I'm wanting to do is just plant some seeds that you are children of the light. And our job as children of the light is to walk in that divine illumination of the light that's already been given to us. And as it comes to exposing, there's all kinds of stuff going around. Always, you know, when my, I, when my kid, when my kids were, <laughs> when I grew up on the bus, we'd go on church trips or go on trips to Cedar Point or Kings Island or, or certain places we'd go. We'd be, in, you know, I was in the middle teenage deal and you're always trying to hold the girl, get the girl, get there, go to hold her hand in the school bus. Oh my gosh, yeah. You ever done that? Yeah. Yeah. Like, your hands are all, I remember sitting like in this run over there. I remember just touch your hand. Woo! I was all excited. My hands were sweating. And everything would be going really good. And all of a sudden, the bus driver would turn on the light. Light check. Yep. There go that hand. Yep. My point was, he didn't have to catch or expose me. All they do is turn the light on. Turn the light on. I remember, I remember that so well. So much that when my kids were growing up, guess what? That became a thing with their boyfriends. We we're going so light check, and we had we used to, in the younger days here. We had what they call a lock in here. All the kids would come hang out here, all the teenagers, and because of because of Dan knowing how Dan was, not picking on the kids, I made sure every light in this building was on. Because all these young kids, you know, are, and and. And I'd walk around every room and make sure because I'm going to keep the lights on. Yes. And, and later on in life, <laughs> later on in my life, my daughter tells me her first kiss oh, was in the kitchen. Wish I could have found that boy that time. But the power of just turning on the light changes all of that. And what I'm trying to, to get as believers in this world, our job, when you go in my house, go in the garage, when you walk in, there's mirrors, there's things on the wall, there's things. The quickest way to dispel that darkness is flip on the light switch and expose everything that's in that room. Right. A lot of times in our life, when we, when we walk as children as a light and walk in, the whole through Ephesians, he's telling you to walk in light, walk in love, walk in this new creation, walk, walk as sons, walk as accepted, walk as ones who are forgiven, walk in this new creation, walk in things that are so fitting and feed from that tree of life that as you walk in, you're illuminating and light up. You don't, you don't have to go and expose all just by Just by showing up and walking in that light, it shows things. Amen. And as it shows things, people might consider to do life differently. I've done it where I run. I, I mean, you read it. Can I read it? Yeah. And we'll go home. Let me go to Galatians for a minute. I'll give you the antidote. The kryptonite. To the darkness. Let me read Corinthians first. I put down the ball, so now I'm going to talk fast. Way to go. We doing all right? Yep. What time is it? That says 14:15 on the little recorder. Who's got a time? 11:36. 11 Think we can done by 11:46? That's rude. 
That's rude. Now, I'm going to say some of these things when I say some of these things are in my word. Hey, quit talking. I'm preaching. Some of these things are kind of, they're, you've got to wrestle these out. I struggle with these verses. I struggle with these verses a lot because there was times in my life that some of these things were going on. I was doing it. And I was a believer. I was struggling with having a good, with my mouth. I was struggling with anger. How about bitterness? You ever had somebody do, a bitterness is just like a movie you keep replaying over and over in your brain. And it just keeps growing and festering and, and different things. And you play over it. Well, 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 if they say this, I'm going to say this. I'm going to do this and do that. You played the whole movie and it never, there was never no reality to it. And there was no reality that maybe at the beginning of it to go, this is based on a true story that never happened. <laughs> Yay. Let me just read it. And I just, you just need to wrestle this out. Here Paul again is talking about inheritance. Watch this. Romans chapter, no, not Romans, Corinthians chapter 6. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, idolaters, or adulterers, or homosexuals, or sodomites, or thieves, or, nor covet, or drunkards, or revilers, or extortioners, will inherit the kingdom of God. Now watch verse 11. Watch this. And such were some of you, but you were washed you were sanctified and you were justified in the, in, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of God. Is that not life changing? What is he saying? That no longer is the outfit that you're dressed in. And he goes, and because it's no longer the outfit you're dressed in, you don't live that way. You don't, and again, as they grew up in those, in those societies, those are all they knew. That was part of their customs. That was part of their customs. You could be married and have 10 girlfriends. Try that here. How would that work, Dave? Glad we've seen you. Last time we see you. And what I'm saying is you could do this and could do it. Sometimes they felt when they would have get, uh, uh, when they would use substances that that would bring, uh, that would bring them closer than intimacy in a relationship with the spiritual realm. It'll bring you closer to something. Yeah. But you never know what it was because you can't remember. That's right. Or if you can't remember, you don't know what, anyhow. All I'm saying is it, it, it warps the mentality when you feed from the tree of good and evil. It warps how we see life. And if we spend all our time trying to fight, think about it. If you spend all your time just trying to fight these things, I'm going to be a good Christian to fight those things. That might sound noble, but all you can do is exhaust yourself out. What you need to do is quit, quit, quit getting in shadow boxing all of these things and start seeing that I'm a child of the sun. I have sonship, and I'm going to walk in the light as he is in the light, and I'm going to trust what he's done for me, that divine life of godliness, that illumination to change the way I see and walk and do life. And what happens is, you know, I said this the other day, when I grew up, alcohol was big in my family. Shauna could tell you, we'd go to parties, I'd have to, you know, here the preacher is dragging everybody to the Dragging them to the car, dragging them home, or doing this, and Sean hadn't grown up around that. But there was a time before that when I, wouldn't, well, I wasn't drinking or doing it, but what had happened was I'd walk by it. And I just thought just from abstaining from it was what I was supposed to do. But I'd see it. All of a sudden, my mouth get the water. All of a sudden, my heart get the pattern. And I'd look over here, looking around, is anybody around? Is the lights off? And instead of me grabbing a drink, and this is how bad it was, I just grabbed somebody else's. That way they didn't know why I was drinking it. Oh, no. And my point is, that might sound noble, but what happened was I was feeding from the wrong tree. I was trying to fight those things in my own strength. And when I started to realize that I was a son, that I had sonship, that I was adopted and made alive in him, and began to realize in a different paradigm, a different deal, it wasn't me just fighting those things and abstaining from it, it was realizing that he already fought those things for me on the cross and conquered those things. And as he conquered those things, the Bible says, I'm more than a conqueror because I'm in Christ Jesus. And what happened is it began to change how I saw those things to where no, they no longer wasn't about abstaining from, it was about feeding from a different tree that no longer, it no longer had the power to control or to manipulate me. I wasn't going to get caught up in deceptiveness that that was the way to do life. And it changed. It says, it's, are you listening? And I'm not picking on any. Just consider the fact that it says those who practice these things didn't say, how many ever, how many ever had an anger issue? Don't raise your hand. Man, that issue. All I'm saying is it says those who make that their 
their way of doing life, it's going to consume you. You're going to miss out on your sonship that you've been given with God. It's kind of like, it's kind of like having an inheritance and you're living somewhere else. You've been, you've been given inheritance and you're living on a street bench hoping one day to get somewhere. Realize that if you would just get up and see everything you've been given, it's already in the bank of heaven put your way. Amen. It's already put your way. And I'm not trying to tell you this. I'm trying to share this with you so that when you leave here, that you can live and walk in the light with some peace and some confidence, not trying to get somewhere, but realize you've already been placed into something that's big. Let, let it be on earth as it is in heaven. Let the things that are in heaven show up in my earth. Let it show up in my earth. And as you do that, what happens is exposing isn't the big deal that everybody makes it. And believe me, I get, it gets me aggravated at times. I just say all this stuff about the exposure wears me out because it's always about the stuff and it's never about Jesus. It's always about how big Goliath is, but it's never big how big God is. It's always how big the sin is and the problem is. And the only way that you become a child of disobedience and the, and the wrath of God is you bring it on yourself by rejecting the message of light and life. It tells you that, 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 that when the message is given, they prefer the darkness over the light. It doesn't say that God said. It, think about it. When you walk in darkness, you trip over your own feet. When you walk in darkness, you don't know the purpose of anything. You're... You're doing all these things, and then you're then the wrath of God disobedient. And think about this: the wrath of my, the wrath of Dan with my kids. You mess with my kids, my love. It's not anger that's going to go. It's it's the love for my kids that makes me up. That wants me to protect them. That wrath is get behind me, kids. Get behind me, kids. I'm going to protect you from this darkness. It's not going. I'm going to teach you all a lesson. Do you, do you see the difference? It's it's out of a it's out of a thing of love of his children to protect us from the ones that reject. But even the ones that reject, watch this, he still loves. He still loves and said the same price that was given for them was given for you. Oh, but that wrath, man, people get eat up with that and we just get so, it sounds good when you're wanting to beat people up, but what about building people up? It might sound, huh. But such were some of you, watch this, but you were washed, you were sanctified, and you were justified. Isn't that something good, righteous, and true? We read there in Ephesians, focus on things that are good, righteous, and true. You've been washed, justified, and sanctified. No strings attached. One more and we'll go home. Or is that enough? This one's a rough one for me. So one of the antidotes is realizing, have you been washed? One of the antidotes to those things when you're frustrating with them, I'll say this, I'm getting a side note. Identity is a big thing to understand in your walk with Christ. Yes. In Adam, from the tree of good and evil, you don't know your identity. You're caught in darkness, you got no purpose, no meaning, no direction in life. When you step over and walk in the light, you can see clearly and walk clearly. I've been accepted, I've been loved, I'm a son, I'm, a son. I'm his favorite. I know it sounds, that, that's, that's amazing to me. That heals my heart. That heals my heart. That heals part of my mindset. It heals the way I talk. It causes me not to be bitter and malice. It causes a thankfulness to rise up in me and a gratitude, a thankfulness that it, despite me, he loves me. Despite all my efforts and time, despite all the time I spent eating from the wrong tree, he still loved me. Despite all of those things. One more. Where'd I tell you? Um, squeezing the ball. Galatians chapter, Galatians chapter six, chapter five. I'm just going to read them. Remember we talk about walk in light, walk in love. We heard this morning, right? Walk in love, walk in light, light, divine illumination of Jesus life shared with you. That's pretty cool. If you read Colossians chapter 2, it says all the fullness of God had dwelt in him while he was on earth. And he says, I'm going to share all that with you. But it's going to be better because it's going to be from the other side of the cross. Like my smile. That's pretty powerful stuff. That's pretty powerful. PJ, it applies to you. 
And it applies to Cliff. It applies to you. It applies to Rick. It applies to, is it Matt? Mr. Kriegel, I got it right. Sometimes I call him Brian. And then, you got, and then you've got everybody on this side. It's all been given to you, not earned, but to live from. It's new. Navigate, be empowered to walk this life out differently. I'm a new creation. I'm going to walk this out and do it differently. And then it goes on here. Where are we at? Chapter 5. I'm going to turn the page. Listen to, listen to all of this in 19 and 21. It says, but the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery. Watch it. Those all sound great. Then he goes, hatred, contentions, jealousy, outburst. Have <laughs> right. ever had an outburst? I have. <laughs> I see some of the women. <laughs> <laughs> outbursts. Then it, goes, then it goes on, selfish ambitions. Can people be self-absorbed? Self-absorbed with their pain, self-absorbed with their problems, self-absorbed. I'm going to get ahead by telling everybody how bad it is. Maybe not. Envy, murderers, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. So anything that comes from that other, from that other tree, he includes in there. And see, I used to preach it this way, and the like. If you're smoking, you're drinking, you're doing all this stuff, you're out. Oh, did I say that out loud? I preach that. I believe that. And as I begin to grow and learn about God's love, he loves all these people that are mentioned in here. What he says is they're feeding from the wrong tree and they're missing out on the life they've been given in Christ. Amen. They're missing out from that life. And then he goes on here and he says, and the like, and I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. You follow on that? What he's, remember, he's real big on inheritance. He's, listen, you're missing out. You're all, your social status in heaven, you're missing out on it because you're going other directions. Instead of going to the light that you've been placed in, you keep walking back to the darkness. It's like getting back in that water and trying to pull all that stuff back up, think it's going to be different this time. Or he's telling the people that have raised with certain customs and certain things, he's educating them and inspiring them to live life differently than they were living before. Because they understood the term inheritance in that, in that Greek Roman time period of context. It was a big deal to them and how that worked and how that was done. And what he's saying there is you're missing out on the divine life and the light that's been given you by focusing on all this other stuff. Make sense? But here's the antidote. You ready? But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such there is no law. Is that the kryptonite to all that other stuff? What's the kryptonite? I'm going to walk in, I'm going to walk in the light, walk in love, walk in this sonship, walk knowing I'm redeemed, I've been delivered from the power of darkness, translated over into the, to, to the power of light, I've been forgiven and I've been given an inheritance and I'm going to learn as a son to understand this inheritance and learn to steward it or walk it out in my life. And part of stewarding that is the way we think, the way we talk, the way we do things. You know, anger, i got to work on that. Doesn't mean I'm out. Shauna could tell you when we were younger, I had lots of outbursts of anger. I said lots of things maliciously. I didn't do the others. I was good. I didn't get drunk, but boy, I could sure get a toot. <laughs> or maybe I didn't get a toot, it was the tone. That's a big one I learned from Jessica there night and Wednesday night Bible study. We were talking about the tones of things, how that can change things. Yeah. I really love you. <laughs> <laughs> Walk in the light. Get out of the dark. We can do things, but sometimes just consider our what I'm saying is consider your approach to life. Consider your approach to things. Don't let it be so stressful and overwhelming in all these things. Does depression, does darkness have power? I believe it has power as long as you let it have power. But if you'll let the light in what Jesus did, it will trump. Think about this. No matter the darkness, the greater the light. No matter how dark it gets, all you got to do is say, you know what? Greater is he that is in me. There's a, it, the light goes down deeper than the darkness and that quick it dispels it. And instead of exposing everything in darkness, it exposes me 
to a new life to be lived. Love, joy, peace, goodness, kindness, gentleness, self-control. One of these times I'm going to preach on self-control. I'm going to preach on that whole just self-control. I'm going to control some self. I'm not going to let negativity get in. Take some crumbs. I'm not going to let the, not going to let the, the tree of, of all this nastiness try to ruin. I'm going to take self-control and not feed on the darkness. I'm going to take some control and quit talking about how big Goliath is. I'm going to talk about the promised land and the life we've been given in Christ. I'm going to talk about the tree of life, the table we've all been brought to, to feed from and to live from. I'm going to talk about that he's for me and not against me. Nothing can separate me from his love. I want to walk in this love and walk in this light because he has given it to me as a gift. And I want to learn to steward it in all areas of my life. In all areas of my life. You ready to go home? Here's what the light does. You ready? Here's my two points. Here's my two points at the end. It reveals, it reveals and imparts a life to be lived. And if you allow it to reveal and impart life, all this stuff about darkness won't be such a big deal. It won't be such a big deal because just by knowing where you're at in Christ and that light shining, it will dispel the darkness effortlessly. When I flip a switch on, is it very, is it very, when I flip the switch on wherever I'm at, and they got all kinds of lights now. You got them on your head, got them on your hands, you got them here, you got them there. You're not meant to be, I had an example and I'm not going to use it. Some of you, some of you old timers will know what it is, but this is an old flare. You ever heard the old flares? It's not an old, you're not an old flare just meant to light up and shine because if I light this this morning, <laughs> See, I got the igniter right there. Yeah. But if I light this this morning, it's going to put off some light. Yeah, it is. And some smoke. Yes. And some sulfur. Yeah. But you're not a light that's been put in a can for the last 30 years. Yeah. That's a little damp and no good. You are meant to shine and be bright in every domain and day of your life. You're not in some, some box waiting for a catastrophe to get on the side of the road going... Light shine. No, he said light be you. You and I are light of the world in Jesus. He says when you begin to live as a light of the world, you don't need to go around exposing. Just walk into the light. Somebody all of a sudden goes, you know what? I need to change some of the way I'm doing. Because of that love and that peace and that goodness and gentleness and the self-control. Sometimes the self-control, self, I'm telling you, that self-control is a big deal. I've messed up a lot of my journey just because I couldn't control my little... Thought I knew something. I, went, I used to tell people, I remember my family, I don't even know why they want to be around me. I thought I was doing a righteous thing, pointing out all their sins. <laughs> I thought I was doing good by exposing their problems. Yeah, you are. You're living with that girl. You're smoking that dope. You're not going to church. God loves you. <laughs> we would do that. And then what we would do is the people that were there, why, why do I want to be like them? And all they do is beat me up. Instead of saying, you know what, I love you, I hate what you're doing, I d but I love you, and I'm going to take my time to impart that life and that love that's been given to me. And they might not ever respond to it. But what if they do? What if they do? I saw it happen more times in my life in journeys with people that, that, that had a, they were messed up. In all different ways, but that's that little, those little acts of kindness and goodness that was brought to me through the salvation and life of God changed the direction of people. Right. Not because of me, but because they begin to consider something different. Maybe God does love me. That's right. Maybe God does care. Maybe God is for me, not just for, not just for <laughs> Teresa. <laughs> I know her name. <laughs> And, and here, as I'm saying, as you leave here, you're not just in an emergency to, fly, to flash on the middle of a highway to blow a bunch of smoke. You are, you are a gift from heaven to shine bright on this earth. And all of heaven is tilted in your direction. And he wants, and he, as he reveals life and imparts life to you, we get to walk this out. That's a new way of doing things. And put on things that are fitting for the newness of the life we've been given. And I would ask you, are you righteous? Are you forgiven? Yes. Is he for you? Is he against you? No. Are you anointed? Are you gifted? Are you talented? All those things are yes. 
And as you begin to grow in those things, the other the darkness loses its appetite to entice you or to do whatever it does. And then you begin to live a life with some peace and some joy and some confidence. No, oh, and by the way, you're forgiven. That empowers you. I was dead. Now I'm alive. My inheritance is I'm a son. Now, when I say sonship, if you're a lady in here, it's, 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 new, it's, it's neutral based. You're all sons and daughters of the Most High. The inheritance isn't just for the men. It's for whosoever would believe. You are sons and daughters. So if you don't like me saying sons, you're daughters in the Most High. And you've been given all things that pertain to life and godliness. And if there's struggles in your families, struggles in the things in your life, or that, I just encourage you to realize that to grab a hold of this life, this divine life that's imparted life to us, and learn to want to have an appetite to grow and walk it out. And it might not always be pretty. Might have to change some of the things. or Maybe your approach to things. Or some of us get so wrapped up in being right, we miss out on everything else. We got to be right. Got to be right. Right, 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 right. And I, I got I to quit. Do you see, want me to light the flare? Huh? I already got it set up for Mr. Regal to run outside with it. He's going to tear you the torch. But understand as you leave here this morning, you're not just some, something in the corner. You're God's favorite. Paul is telling you as God's favorite, see yourself as God's favorite and learn to walk. Learn to walk in that light and in that love that's been given to you in Christ Jesus. All that other stuff has been washed away. See the new, embrace the new. You're not dirty and distant, you're clean and close. You're not far off, but you're close. Wherever you're at in your life, he loves you and knows everything about you. He's giving you a clean slate. Don't you want to live that clean slate? And he's giving you all, all of heaven is tilted in your direction. Psalms 31 says he was, think about, I got to quit. He was mad for a moment. He was up, does it say, throw it up there. For just a moment, he was angry. His anger is just for a moment. But his favor is forever. Think about that. We focus on all this anger stuff all the time. It says it was just for a moment. But it says his favor is forever. How many like favor? You're not trying to get it. You already got it. So arise. Let's stand up. And let's go home. I keep telling you I'm going to do that. Did we make it to 1146? Father, I thank you for each and every person in this room and the opportunity to be here and, and to minister, to minister good news. Father, as everybody leaves here today, I thank you that they see that they've been given a status of heaven. They've been given an inheritance of heaven. It's not much just person on the left or person on the right. It's for whosoever would believe. And Lord, as they embrace this newness and step out of darkness and feed and feed from the tree of life, that Father, that they, they embrace a new way of navigating and they embrace change and learning. And I'll even say this, they embrace, they embrace the change and growth by letting things go. And Father, I thank you as they walk this out that will bring about significant change to them and those around them. I thank you for significant change in that newness that gives stability, that gives clarity, that gives momentum, that, that, doesn't, that takes away the fogginess or the blurriness of their eyes, but there is a clarity to the life they've been given in Christ. And then, Father, the things that they may, there's things that they might be going through or things they're going on, I just, I just think that you speak to their heart that darkness does not, no longer has a say because that darkness was nailed to the cross. And you imparted to us that life and light of life and salvation that only comes through faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And Father, we thank you for Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. We thank you for clean hearts. We thank you for new hearts. We thank you for a new way of doing life. That we are your favorite and that you are always for us and not against us. And we seal this time up. With Isaiah 60 that says, Arise and shine, for the light has come. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen.